He knew he was going to be in trouble again. He was in London doing something for them, and he just said, screw it, and just like went for the train, got on a train, got the heck out. Was he with Scientology people, and he just like... I think he was on his away. own, and he just took off, but he knew that he was, he was, he was, it was like, he, you, you got to go all the way. You can't just like do it. You know what I'm saying? I've wondered, I have wondered if the government is basically waiting for it to shrink to a certain level. And then right. move in, and then move in, because then it'll be a little easier to knock over. I've I've thought about that. I've wondered mm -hmm. about that. Well, if they wait long enough, someone taller than Miscavige will be there. It'll be harder to knock over. <laughs> you know, really tough. But we keep we keep talking about Rinder, yeah, Mike Rinder, who I yeah. know is a friend of yours, yeah. Mike. Really good guy. When I've talked with him, he was on my friend Danny Jones's podcast a few years ago. And he was supposed to come on here. I hope we can do that again in the future. We weren't able to get that done. But I talked about him a, a bit with Mark Bunker. For, but for people who haven't heard that podcast, can you just give the, the brief background on, on Mike Rinder's role in Scientology and how he came up through it? Yeah. In, in uh, 2009, between 2007 and 2009, there was a little mini exodus of high-level high Scientology executives that all got together and talked to the Tampa Bay Times for this incredible series that should have won a Pulitzer in 2009 called The Truth Rundown. And Mike Mike was one of those. It was it was mm -hmm. an amazing moment. And I think that's part of what changed this press uh, approach that I've talked about, where the press is starting to take these abuses more seriously, thanks to Mike Rinder and Mark and Claire Headley, Jefferson Hawkins, Amy Scobie, these people that all came out at one time. Mike is particularly interesting among those. Because he was not only, you know, second or third highest ranking Scientologist in the whole thing, but he was specifically in charge of that spy wing, the Office of Special Affairs. Yes. And so he knows Affairs. exactly how David Miscavige deals with enemies and that kind of thing. He wrote an amazing book. It's called uh, A Billion Years. And it came out uh, a year and a half ago, I think. Incredible book. Uh, because he was in all the places that things were happening over the last 30 years. And it's, it's just an incredible. Uh, I, I encourage you to get that really well told. I can't believe how much Scientology history he got into that one book. And it's a very personal book. He opens it by talking about the fact that he's lost his adult children, that you know he'll never get back because they stayed in Scientology. Oh, they stayed. They stayed, and they denounce him, and Scientology uses them in videos against him. It's really, oh. just really disgusting. And, uh, you know, he's started a new family now. He's got a wonderful new family. And um, and he's had health problems. You know, we're all rooting for him. He's, he's, he's got cancer and he's, and he's been doing really, really well with it. That's public? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. He's talked about that. And it's, it's – um, uh, we're all really concerned about him. But he's, he looks great. He's doing great. Um, he and I actually both fought cancer at the same time. I had a much, much less serious mm. thing that he did. And uh, but it was kind of funny that we were both going through it at the same time. And but he's you know, he's he's an amazing guy, and he has uh, really become one of Dave Miscavige's biggest nightmares. And he he's worked very closely with law enforcement. He's told the FBI everything he knows. Um, I I just think like they came to him or he went to them. Uh, he 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 went to them and and you know turned over documents and told them everything. And uh, you know, like I said, at at one point in 2010. Scientology was, I mean, FBI was very close to raiding the base. They decided not to. Later, I managed, uh, another journalist actually got up and shared it with me, a very friendly gesture, um, shared with me the actual FBI report. And Mike Rinder's interview was in there along with Amy's and Mark and Claire. I mean, you can read now what they were all told the FBI. And why, again, did they not do that? I think oh, you mentioned that earlier. Well, no, I haven't. That's a, that's a really complex question. Um, I think what, you know, Scientology, was, they have people in power. They have people who will go to the Department of Justice and complain personally. Uh, what happened was there's this character named Tommy Davis. He was the spokesman for the Church of Scientology, <laughs> and um, he's the son of Ann Archer, uh, the actress. Uh, God, how does this all go down? So uh, at one point, uh, when John Brousseau left Scientology, uh, Tommy Davis was part of that blow drill, and they went to Texas to try to talk John Brousseau into coming back. And um, and then later in uh, Mark and Claire Headley's lawsuit, 
Um, they asked Tommy Davis in, in a deposition, isn't it true that you guys will go follow people? And bring, Oh, no, no, we never do that. Mm-hmm. Now, that, that um, uh, thing he had done in Texas was in a police report, but it was private because it was not, it was part of an ongoing investigation. Mm. The FBI agent, who was the chief agent invest, you know, in the Scientology investigation that where they were thinking about raiding the base, knew that this document of, of Tommy Davis showing up in Texas would help impeach him in Mark Headley's lawsuit where he had said that he doesn't do that kind of thing. Oh. And so the FBI agent gave that police report to Mark and Claire's attorney to use in their case. And when they went into court and said, look, we got proof, we've got documented proof that Tommy Davis is lying about not taking part in these blow drills. He just took part in one in Texas. The Scientology uh, attorneys freaked out and said, where do you have that document? You shouldn't have that document. See, they knew about the document. They didn't think the, the Headleys could get it. You shouldn't have that debt. They, they put two and two together, went to the Department of Justice and said, listen, your FBI agent did something improper. Your FBI agent oh. helped out a private lawsuit oh. and busted her, and the whole th- investigation went down the tubes. Oh, my God. No. I'm the only one that wrote that story. So can they ever use any of that, or that's just... Well, I mean, the FBI uh, investigation is all on the record. I published, like I said, I published that whole yeah, investigation. But, but in but... a future investigation that they were able to build, can they even cite anything they did there because they can it's cite now it. tainted? They can cite it, but I mean, it's old now, you know, so I don't know that how useful it would be. But, you know, um, a, an FBI agent realizing that Mark and Claire Headley were being... Uh, that their judge was being lied to by Scientology and and just felt personally, I can do something, and did something to help, ended up torpedoing the whole that investigation. Sucks. Yeah. That, and you wrote about that yeah. back then? Yeah. No, I wrote about it, uh, uh, let's see, that would happen. I want to say 2014, something like okay, that. Okay, so a few years after. Yeah. So they weren't able to go. It. Now, th- this is after the 07, 09 Tampa series right. that render and other guys were right so the so for. that so that group of people came out between 2007 and 2009 they went to the tampa bay times that came out in 2009 truth rundown that helped produce and then the uh, yeah. the anderson uh, um um anderson cooper on cnn then did his series based on that tampa bay series oh that, and, and then that's what prompted the fbi then to, to get serious about their investigation in 2010 but then it got torpedoed. Okay, so Mike had left Scientology before he was given those interviews. Right. In he, like 07? Mike escaped on a London street in 2007. What what went down? What do you mean on a London street? He was, he. you have to read his book. He was, you know, he'd been, he knew he was going to be punished. He was in big trouble again. You know, you get into trouble for no reason. He knew he was going to be in trouble again. He was in London doing something for them. And he just said, screw it. And just like... Went for the train, got on a train, got the heck out. Was he with Scientology people, and he just like? I think he was on his away. own, and he just took off. But he knew that he was, he was, he was. It was like you, you got to go all the way. You can't just like do it. You know what I'm saying? And he just ran. He just took off with what he had with him. It's so strange that like that's the story. It's just a regular middle aged man walking in the middle of a London street. He's got no one with him except like the dude eating at a cafe right there and someone else getting their dry cleaning done. It's broad daylight and he's like, I'm gonna get on this eleven, twelve train that departs for the next stop and that's gonna be my getaway. Yeah. There's no it's like it's like a ghost is chasing you. It's like this ghost in your it's not like in the like in no, actually, pun intended. In a Tom Cruise movie, where he's jumping yeah. on a plane as yeah. there's guns coming at him and shit, right. it's just like right. I got to get out of this mental bubble, and I'm gonna do it by physically walking onto that train right there and sitting down. And yet, maybe he could get two stops away and then change his mind and come back, and no one knows anything happens. So then he's got to like mentally sit in that train wherever the fuck it goes, maybe up to Scotland. I don't know. Right. And like convince himself to get to a spot, and when he's at the next spot, it's like. Okay, well, now what? It's so strange. Like, for guys like you and me to think about this, it's so strange. It's crazy. But they they know the retaliation mechanism. They know how much, you know, they're going to be, people are going to be coming after them. And so, 
Yeah. And and they all have different stories about how they got out. It's incredible. What did he do after that? So the train stopped somewhere. Like, what did well, he do? Well, he went to the airport, flew to the, to, flew to the U.S. I think he ended up in Denver. Didn't know anybody. He just had to... He, I think he knew one person. Uh, Ex-Scientologist? Just got himself a job selling cars, you know? And he was just like, nobody knew he was there. Nobody knew who he was. He was just selling cars. Oh, so Denver. he had just disappeared and somewhere Miscavige is like, where the fuck did Mike go? Oh, they, they've tracked him down. Well, no, I know. But, but see, like he, at that knew, point. he knew enough that he they weren't going to be able to talk him into coming back because he knew how... Oh, so were. they had tracked him down to Denver right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But he had been in the hole... For right. a couple of years. When yeah. was that? Uh, so the hole started in January 2004, and it was started with maybe, a, you know, I don't know, 30 or 40 executives in a double-wide trailer there, and they were locked in. Um, they were only let out once a day to go across the street to a place to take showers, and then they were fed slop from a bucket. Um, Mike Slop was, from a bucket. Yeah. Mike, Mike was in, I think, 2006, 2007, and then he was pulled out. Because Miscavige needed him to deal with John Sweeney, the BBC reporter who was doing a special about Scientology then. <laughs> and what's really amazing, if, if you watch that first John Sweeney uh, documentary, he did a couple. But if you look at the first one, you look at Rinder in that, he's skeletal, okay? Because he's been in the hole for a year, eating almost nothing. It's in, oh man, you you can. So wait, he's in the documentary. So so Miscavige wanted him to be one of the guys to respond on the record because Sweeney was serious. I mean, there's a BBC guy. We got it. He needs big. He needs his big guns. So he pulled. Can uh, we find that, Alessi? He John Sweeney and uh, Mike Rinder. I've got that picture on my website somewhere. But uh, yeah, put up, put up John Sweeney, Mike Rinder, and and search images, and I'll, I'll, I'll point it out to you. So um, uh, Mike had been in the hole. And they found out that Sweeney was going to be doing the special, so Miscavige was like, I need you. And that he said that happened to a number of people. They'd come into the hole until, for some reason, Miscavige needs them and then pull them out. Now, would would, would Miscavige come in himself or he send someone no, to get him? No, he sent somebody. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, no, none of those. Scroll down. I think it's black and white, actually. Uh... There it is. See see the um, – yeah. That's – that's Whoa. yeah, yeah. Compare that to his normal size of his face. That's where he's been in the hole for a year. Okay, and oh, they, so they put him back in. After and they this? no, he, they pulled him out to deal with Sweeney, and I don't think he went. He he may have gone in and out a couple times. Oh, because he went to London, and that's where he ended up escaping. Then he ended up right. in London escaping. Like that. So, so it's like the last. So that's thing that's he did. like in two thousand five, I think, yeah, or two thousand six is when he's dealing with Sweeney. Do we have? Can we see if there's something on YouTube of like Render addressing Sweeney? I'd love to see this. That's a picture, but try to see if we can pull up. A YouTube video. So this was a part of like a series he was doing on BBC. Special, a special, yeah. So Sweeney did a special in uh, 2007, I want to say. Maybe maybe it was 2005 called um, – I can't remember what the first one was called. And then after Mike escaped, then they got together to make a second one called um, Secrets of Scientology, I think. Mm. I don't know if the first one is even online anymore. Um I've seen on the Netflix. I yeah. But anyway, uh, so he made those two. They're great. They're really great. All right. I don't know if we're going to be able to find it, but yeah. I, I'd love to see that. So this is, he ends up leaving, I guess, after doing this and goes and gives these stories, I guess, while he's in Denver to the Tampa Bay Times. So then people. in Denver, um, uh, they tracked him down, and this woman, uh, Monique Yingling, who's a top attorney for the church, kind of threatened him. He was really unhappy with that. So then he got together with these other uh, top, former top executives, and they talked to the uh, Tampa Bay Times in 2009. And like I said, that really changed a lot of things. And it's really kind of been – there we go. If I if, – I'm just going to say this. If if this is picking up at the end of us watching it, it's because there's Eminem music on it, and that's copyrighted. But if not, let's let this play. Real fast, yeah. John, I didn't realize it was this guy. Yeah, John Sweeney was on Danny's show maybe three, four years ago about Ukraine. No, he did an unbelievable series on Ghislaine Maxwell. Oh, okay. it was a right. podcast right. series, right. and like the investigation was incredible. I didn't realize he yeah. did this too. That yeah. was yeah. fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But he, yeah, if people were seeing that on the screen, Turn again, if you, if, if it skipped and you didn't see a video, we'll put that link in description. I'm just like live editing in my head right now because we may get a copyright thing with the Eminem music that they had there. But like, holy shit. 
you're not kidding. I mean, he 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 looks like a skeleton. Yeah, render. No, that that's what's fun to know is that that's right. He had been in the hole. He had been a prisoner. They pulled him out, and then he's arguing with John Sweeney, like you know, defending Miscavige, the guy that's kept him in prison for months. It's just that that's how the the, the mental conditioning. It's crazy. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.